Hi everyone, my name is Simon, I'm the founder of Horma Studio and today I'll be showing you a new rendering teardown uh, dealing with this really nice uh, interior rendering. So as you'll see, uh, we'll have to, we're going to deal with really in-depth details today considering the fact that the overall image is of really high quality. So let's get started. Uh, I think it's still interesting to have a look at what is working in this image because it is really interesting and yet quite simple. So the first thing we'll have to have a look at it is the composition. So as you can see, we're dealing with a frontal view, which is quite simple. In terms of um, composition, we do have a sort of a left third that creates a window here to the living room. And we do have some interesting, like simple but interesting composition ideas. The first one is to have uh, like a, something in the foreground that sort of anchors this uh, room. The second one is to have some sort of a opening because sometimes the interior renderings I have or I see are less interesting I'd say because we don't see the outside which is sort of a problem considering the fact that what you're sort of selling in an interior is also what you're seeing uh, outside so here we do have whoops we do have a view of a, a tree and it's it's a little bit uh, maybe overexposed but still it's not not much of a problem here and well the, the other thing we can see as well is the texturing and detailing is quite interesting we do have like a switch here and uh, interesting uh, pendants, a bit of uh, greenery and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. So I guess the, there are three things that we're gonna have a look at. Um, first one is gonna be a little bit regarding the quality of the image. Second one is gonna be regarding the level of contrast. And third one is gonna be regarding like the detail and the storytelling. So Regarding noise, which is, I think, the s slight problem I have is that once you zoom in a little, you can see there is a lot of, um, well, here it's the texture, but if you look at here, especially, we do have quite a bit of noise here, which could be, well, it's not like the biggest problem because there is this sort of a graphic style, uh, I guess it's Belgium, uh, some sort of collage idea where you don't really mind having this sort of uh, slight noise texture but still here we're sort of dealing with a more of a realistic um, idea of an image so it's still quite good to keep in mind to sort of um, increase the subdivisions of your texture so that you don't get this uh, noise here even though they're quite subtle they're still like like you can still see them quite a bit in the, in the dark areas. Second thing, I guess, is as you can see, when we put it in black and white, it's quite bright. So it can sort of relate to this idea of a Scandinavian style where you have like a lot of white uh, and sort of overexposed, not overexposed, but like quite bright idea here. The thing is, it's still um, like sometimes, as you can see, some uh, objects become a little bit less legible, which can sort of become a problem. And the idea that you don't have like the whole specter of um, or spectrum, sorry, of uh, grays is can be a problem here. We do lack a little bit of black in the in the overall image. So I would suggest um, increasing a little the, the mid grays because here you can see like we do lack the dark areas. It's not like much of a problem since the idea is that the, the room is like well lit, but still it's, I think it's, it would be a little bit better this way. The other thing as well is I think in terms of saturation, we are quite desaturated, which uh, 
actually that's okay but it's something to keep in mind because the thing is here since we as you can see in terms of colors we were quite simple we have this sort of orange ground and then the rest is sort of bluish because of the the shadows but that's the thing is like you do need to act at least increase a little bit the levels in order to make all the slight variations of colors pop up a little bit more right. like this uh, light blue here or the sort of purple um, sofa here etc so that's that's it uh, another thing that was quite interesting that I was wondering is here you can see like I usually say try to avoid having like to crop your image just uh, like 10 centimeters off of an object because otherwise otherwise it'll seem weird thing is here in this case we do have the reflection here that makes you understand that we do have the reflection of the window here so it's not not much of a problem still i would sort of suggest having a little bit more of the the window here maybe another thing that's like really tiny details this time is like this uh, electric sockets seems a little bit um, scaled weirdly because you can see here that this um, this electric socket here is not perfectly um, round which uh, like you can see here it's been scaled on the like z-axis or whatever and it's a little bit uh, twisted so that's like tiny details but the thing is like uh, when you add detail you have to make sure they're so like perfect <laughs> anyway um, I think the main point of this video is going to be regarding the storytelling so basically here you can see um, so I'd like to make clear the idea that this is um, can I say it really depends on the idea that if your uh, work is commissioned or not and the amount of uh, freedom you get when you're dealing with your image because like the the ideas that I'm going to suggest now are like not every, not everybody would like it but still this is the extra kind of details that I think would add up to having like a really really good image so what I'd like to talk about is here you can see we do have like details like this and uh, like a lot of stuff on the um, on the shelves the thing i think that we're missing is the idea that people are living in this place because all of this looks a little bit unperson unpersonal uh, there's no like proper belongings i'd say so what i would suggest is uh well in terms of like regarding this very image there are tiny details that like you need to keep uh, as subtle as possible, but still to sort of make understandable or legible the idea that someone is living here or actually like to suggest how many people are living here or what kind of, uh, what kind of people are living here and what are they, their age and things like that. What you can do that is like, could be quite fun is to maybe add like some sort of a, a coat or something on, on a chair or, or add a set of keys because there are two ways to go there is like you either add like people somewhere which is quite like it could work but it's not not always the best and the problem with inserting people is that you have to find the perfect cutout and you have to insert it perfectly otherwise it's going to completely ruin your image the other way is to insert uh, tiny details that could be as i said a hanging coat uh, and depending on the code style you're going to imagine what kind of people live here you can have a set of keys you can put uh, stuff like uh, like maybe shoes or I don't know or um, like the usual thing we do find is the sort of drape that uh, is hanging on the on a sofa things like that the idea basically is to have some sort of contrast between uh, the quite um, the quite rigid uh, framing and sort of uh, a little bit too clean uh, aspect of the image and sort of contrast it with sort of a more messy, but not too messy because you don't want to 
feel like you're in some sort of a big sty or stuff like that but still like feel that the you're not in a in a simple magazine but you're actually in someone's place where some people are living so i guess that's the main idea here uh so it can go with like simple belongings such as coats uh maybe like the idea if you maybe this is a an apartment with a like a couple and a and a kid so you would maybe put like a, a teddy bear or uh some sort of toys hanging there it's just the idea of like suggesting really simple uh storytelling ideas and things that people can potentially re relate to and i guess this is like the main idea behind that is that once you've reached this kind of a uh, level where everything is really looking good it's more about like the second level i guess we're not second but like 10th or 11th level is to think about the storytelling and what what's actually happening in the image beside the actual architecture and the design because what we're selling in the end is not uh not a simple project but you're selling uh sort of, sort of a way of life or a story of things happening in your rendering so i guess that's that's it uh so i think yeah there was something i wanted to mention there's this uh website here that i would strongly suggest uh everyone not everyone to have a look at it the idea behind that this is to basically have a look at how um interior design magazines deal with uh, details in uh in photographs because you don't have to look at renders all the time you should rather look at basically your own room your own kitchen your own living room and things like that to get ideas and also look at what people in um, insert in their photographs to make it look more lively so depending on your client and depending on the kind of uh, standard you're looking for you're going to have to insert tiny details and they're going to have to be quite subtle or they can be uh not subtle at all the idea is to have a, is to match the the expectations of the people who are going to be looking at your image actually i might i'll be doing uh in the coming weeks hopefully uh, a series of uh, article regarding like the ideas of tiny details you can add in your images so keep an eye out for it and uh, hopefully you'll find it as interesting as i found to have a look at this image so yeah Hopefully you've learned some interesting tips for your like really advanced renderings and uh, I'll see you in the next teardown. Thank you guys.